Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wei Yu. Uh, it's my great honor to present our research work profile uh, on the fly the input type probing technique for better zero day vulnerability detection. Uh, this is a joint work from Purdue University, uh, Indiana University, and Lem University of China. Mm. Uh, actually, I found that it doesn't work to move to the next page. Oh, okay, uh, it was not. And uh, first, let me give a brief introduction uh, to the mutation-based fuzzing. Uh, it starts from a set of uh, valid input instance as seed input, and uh, continuously modifies them to explore various ex uh, ex execution paths. And in each fuzzing iteration, an input is selected from the seed coupers uh, for random mutations, and the mutated inputs are executed on the target application, and their code coverage are traced. And those mutated inputs and the increased code coverage are saved into the seed coupers uh, for further mutation. But unfortunately, uh, blindly random mutation is not that effective. Uh, we use AFL, the most uh, popular mutation-based father, to fuzz open for 24 hours. And we observe that more than 60% uh, of the mutations are performed on the input bytes that are ineffective. Uh, as presented in this figure, um, uh, whose uh, x-axis uh, labels each individual byte of the input, and the y-axis uh, shows the number of mutations performed on each byte. So here we observe that uh, uh, more than 1.5 million mutations are performed on the 31st bytes, which is ineffective uh, for coverage improvement. And another observation is that uh, um, the effective mutation ratio drops very quickly. The effective mutation ratio uh, is measured by the number of mutations that increase coverage over the number of total mutations as presented in this figure, whose x axis um, stands for the hour spending fuzzing, and the y axis uh, stands for the effective mutation ratio changes around time. And we can see that um, the code coverage is hardly improved after eight hours. And the existing works um, improve fuzzing on both breadth and depth. On the one hand, different seed selection and prioritization algorithms are proposed to help cover as more uh, program code as possible given a limited bu budget. And on the other hand, multiple program analysis, uh, such as tent analysis, symbolic execution, and gradient-based uh, search uh, are proposed to integrate it uh, with fuzzing to uh, reach program passes that need to satisfy a specific condition. So this work uh, has improved the effectiveness of fuzzing to some extent. However, some uh, highly, uh, more highly effective fuzzing requires in-depth knowledge of the target program's input. So uh, this motivates our work of Profuzzer, uh, which performs an on-the-fly input structure understanding and utilizing in a two-stage uh, fuzzing process. So in the first stage, uh, the types of the input fields are probed in a lightweight manner that consists of three um, steps, including per byte mutation observation, field identification, and uh, um, type discovery. And in the second stage, the type information is leveraged to explore valid values for better code coverage and uh, exploit specific values that may lead to a vulnerability. So we should note here that um, the types discussed here are application agnostic types, such as raw data size, which are critical important for fuzzing. Instead of those uh, application specific types, such as the IP address or PDF data structures and so on. And we identified six fuzzing related input types, including assertion, raw data, enumeration, offset, size, and loop count. And these types cover most of the input content for popular applications, and each of them affects a, pro, uh, affects a program execution in a unique way. So uh, we take enumeration and size as examples. An input field of enumeration type has a small set of valid values, with other values causing the program uh, to terminate with exception. Here we show a code snippet of OpenGPEG uh, for assessing an enumeration field that indicates color depth. As we can see, that um, 
OpenJPEG supports four different color depths, each corresponding to a different handling function. And uh, our input field of a size type determines the amount of data the program should read from the input for further processing. So here is the code snippet uh, from OpenJPEG for processing a size field that indicates the image height. So as we can see that the program will uh, terminate directly if the input file is not lengthy enough as indicated by the size uh, field. So uh, input fields are automatically discovered via uh, byte-wise mutations and analyzing the impacts of the individual mutated bytes on the program executions. So uh, specifically, uh, given a seed input, Professor uh, mutates one byte at a time, enumerating all the 256 values of the byte to collect the corresponding execution profiles. So an um, execution profile is the trace difference between the execution with the original input and the execution with the mutated input. And after observing per byte mutation effect, we group consecutive bytes that share similar execution profiles together as an input field. Uh, for example, the, the zero and the first bytes compose a group since they share similar execution profiles, uh, while the second byte uh, starts another group since its execution profiles are totally different from the previous bytes. So on the intuitions, be, uh, so the intuitions uh, behind this net, the program tends to uh, perform a validation check on a whole input field instead of individual bytes. Uh, hence, if uh, some consecutive bytes belong to the same field, it is very likely that they share a large uh, part of their execution profiles that are corresponding to invalid mutated values. Uh, as an example, the zeros and the first bytes of the input are simultaneously checked by a, 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 a simultaneously examined by a check against a constant value. Uh, here we show the profile um, similarity graph of these two bytes, whose x axis enumerates all the possible values from the byte, and the y axis shows the similarity between the original execution and the mutated execution. As we can see in a both bytes has only one valid value whose corresponding similarity score is one. And the other invalid values to lead to the termination of program has a, has a very low similarity score. So these two bytes share the same minimal similarity since they have the same uh, termination path with the exception. So uh, we group them together. Then given a group of consecutive bytes as an input field, the next step is to determine the type of the field. Once again, we use the enumeration and size as examples. And for an enumeration field, there exists a proper subset of all its possible values, such that for any value in this subset, its similarity score is larger than the mid-range, and for any others not in the subset, uh, its similarity score is, similar, uh, is smaller than the mid-range. So as shown in the profile similarity graph of the 28 bytes, which is an enumeration field, uh, there are four valid values that may lead the program move forward, hence have a relatively high similarity score. While other invalid values lead the program terminate immediately, uh, hence the similarity score is very low. Now mm, let's move to the uh, Field si a size field. So for a size field, there exists a bound such that different values within the bound correspond to different similarity scores larger than the mid-range, and for any value beyond the bound, its similarity score is smaller than the mid-range. So as shown in the profile uh, gra uh, similarity graph of this 22nd byte, which is a side field, Note that uh, value 2 is in the bound, as we use a very small image as the input, and the, in, uh, and the value smaller than the bound have a relatively high similarity score, since the input is uh, lengthy enough than uh, the uh, amount of data to be read for further processing. And while the values uh, larger than the bound have a very small similarity score, uh, indicating a early termination. So by matching execution profiles with different feature patterns, uh, the type of each field is identified. We use different le uh, legends to mark different types of fields in this figure. As we can see, we have six uh, kind of 
uh, uh, types of field uh, that are identified. And the type information is used for guide further mutations. The guidance is provided in two aspects. In the first aspect, it limits the mutation to all the valid values of the field type to achieve better coverage. Uh, as an instance, uh, for a size um, uh, for for a size field, when mutation increases its value by x, um, it also uh, appends x bytes of data at the end of the file. And uh, in the second aspect, Professor exploits a set of special values that may lead to potential vulnerability. As an instance, for a size uh, for a size field, uh, we will try to force its value to be the difference between uh, the end of file and the current location, which may result in um, a buffer will flow if the program does not properly handle unexpected values. And we evaluated, uh, we, we conducted a set of experiments to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of Profather. So due to time limit, we will present four of them here. So the first one is, is the probing accuracy, which measures whether Profather can collectively identify fields and their types through probing. Uh, we acquired the ground truth by manually checking uh, how applications handle individual bytes and then compare the probing results with the ground truth to measure false positive uh, rates and the false negative rates by Profather. Uh, we also compare Profiler with AFL analysis, a simple offline file format analysis utility included in AFL. So the evaluation result shows that the Profiler has only around 5% false positive rate and false po uh, negative rate, rate on average, while AFL analysis has around 40% false positive rate and 70% false negative rate, which is relatively high. And the second one is the finding zero-day vulnerabilities. We run Profather on 10 extensively tested real-world applications. Uh, these applications cover different categories, including image, audio and video, PDF, and compression. So within two months, 42 zero-days are discovered with 30 of them awarded by CVE. The third one is the evaluation on standard benchmarks. We performed, uh, we, we compared Profather with some state-of-the-art fuzzing tools, including AFL, AFL Fast, uh, Jira, and Wazer on Google Fuzzer test suite to see whether they can reach the specified code locations. And the evaluation results show that Profather can reach more target locations and is two to eight times faster than other uh, fuzzers. And the fourth one is the performance compared with other fathers. So as we can see that the professor achieves more pass coverage than other fathers and spends less time to reach the same coverage. Besides, professor keeps relatively a high uh, effective mutation ratio. Uh, finally, uh, we discussed the differences between professor and the closely related works. Uh, some early studies reverse engineer the input structure at an offline fashion uh, by using symbolic execution, type propagation, or memory access pattern analysis. And recently, um, re uh, researches on field aware fuzzing are emerging. They intercept string compa uh, comparisons or perform 10 analysis to infer magic value bytes, perform the type, uh, proportion type, and the shape and size of the input uh, types. And different from this works, Profather uh, includes a lightweight mechanism uh, to discover the relations uh, between input bytes and program behaviors by observing the program execution path uh, violations in response to mutations of this input content. So instead of using a heavyweight program analysis technique such as tent analysis or symbolic execution, in addition, um, the inferred type of by Profather is application agnostic uh, and fuzzing related instead of the program uh, specific. So in conclusion, we propose a technique that leverage only fly type learning to improve fuzzing. The basic idea is to probe input fields and, uh, in, uh, and types by observing the in, uh, fuzzing process and leveraging the type information to explore more program passes and uh, exploit potential vulnerabilities. 
Uh, based on the proposed technique, we implemented a prototype system called Profather. And the evaluation results indicate that Profather has a better performance of both uh, code coverage and vulnerability exposure. It discovered 42 zero days uh, vulnerabilities, uh, 30 of which are assigned with CVEs. The source code of, of Profather will be released soon on the GitHub. And that is the end of my presentation. And thank you for your attendance, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Use the microphone and state your name and affiliation. Sure. Christina Anitza Rotaru, Northeastern University. Um, so first, an observation. There is some work in fuzzing protocols, myself included, where we actually use types uh, in order to speed up, you know, coverage, uh, speed up and also improve coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, but my question is, um, you show that your technique improves over several other fuzzers. Do you have any idea where is that improvement coming from? For example, you were identifying several types. Maybe all your improvement comes from one type. Um, so. Uh, so um, the improvement comes from two experts. The first expert is that we uh, ignore or eliminate some uh, unnecessary type of uh, uh, mutations on that e e um, those bytes whose mutation is not ineffective, su such as raw data or uh, assertion, because that any mutations on these two bytes has no uh, help for, for improve the, 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 the coverage, right? For the raw data and the assertion. And, uh, and then the other experts comes from, we focus our more effort on fuzzing on, uh, on mutation with net loss of valid value. So for example, for the enumeration field, we only um, mutate then with the uh, valid value that will make the program move forward. Um, and we don't uh, fuzzing with the net, well, uh, we don't mutate with net invalid value that will cause the program uh, terminate immediately. So I think the improvement comes from these two experts. One is uh, ignore those ineffective mutations. The other is fix our mutation on those uh, effective ones. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice work. I'm Jun from Stevens. Mm, so I saw you compared your, your work with um, tense analysis-based works like Angoro. Do Angora. you have any evaluation comparison between Profather and uh, Angoro? I do understand that when your paper is accepted, Angoro may not be open source at that time. But do you have uh, evaluation results by now? Yeah, thanks for the uh, suggestion. And, and this suggestion is also the one that our PC, uh, our reviewers suggest us uh, to do. But at the time of uh, writing of this paper, that Angular is not released there. So uh, we, we have asked for the authors, and then, uh, and, and then they say that they, they have uh, released them re recently. So um, we haven't get time to compare our tool with the Angola. And I think uh, uh, we will just uh, start to uh, make it as our future plan to compare them. Yeah. yeah thanks for the information. Yeah, just uh, one more sentence. So the tensor analysis in Angola is quite efficient, actually. So mm -hmm. you may want to give it a try. Thanks. OK, thank, thank you. you. We're out of time. Let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you.